In this episode, Jordo and I will be discussing the design origins of Sonic the Hedgehog characters and what real-life animals inspired their creation. Starting things off, let's look at Ogilvy Maurice, better known to most as Sonic the Hedgehog. Typical for Sonic, we can speed right to the conclusion that this character is based on a hedgehog. No brainer, obviously. Sonic wasn't always going to be this animal, though. At first, a rabbit design was in the running for the main character slot. Eventually, though, they settled on a hedgehog, as it would allow for Sonic to use spikes for attacks and roll into a wheel to drive home the speed aspect of the game. So, the rabbit character was scrapped and slated to star in a game called Rystar instead, until also being scrapped for an anthropomorphic shooting star. Further dissecting his design, he's blue because... Sega! But thanks to the 8th issue of the original Sonic comic, we know this blue coloring isn't natural for him. We learn this is what Sonic used to look like, Basically your average looking hedgehog, with brown fur and smaller quills. This Nigel Thornberry looking square is actually a younger Dr. Robotnik, and for some godforsaken reason, he decided to give this pest a pair of power sneakers, which gave Sonic the urge to run. Like, run a lot. Really, really fast. He broke the sound barrier, and of course, this is what transformed Sonic into the blue one we know today. For some reason, his quills emerged too. I don't even have anything to say about that. I just don't know why the writers felt the need to do that. On another note, real hedgehogs aren't that fast, clocking in at a measly 4 miles per hour, meaning they're easily picked off by their predators, some of which being owls, dogs, and foxes. Hey, speaking of which, Tails is Sonic's best friend, at least in the video games, I'm not sure what their deal is in the second movie yet. He's based on a young mythological kitsune. There's a chance you're already aware of this mythical creature, but if you're not, it's a Shinto deity taking the form of a fox with multiple tails. They're often depicted with nine, but young ones only start with a single tail and grow more as they age. Kitsunes, and tails for that matter, are based on the Ezo Red Fox, a subspecies of Japanese Red Fox found in parts of Japan, such as Hokkaido. Appearance-wise, it's your basic fox, but they do come in a blonde morph that closely matches tails' yellow coat. Also, their formal name, Kita Kitsune, it just means Northern Fox. Obviously, they're named after their geographical location. But on a compass, North is most often depicted as upwards, could this be a nod to Tails' flying ability taking him to the sky? Uh, probably no. But do you ever think about how weird that is? Sonic has a lot of bird and bat characters that should be able to fly, yet they give it to a f***ing fox? Flying isn't a power regularly attributed to Kitsunes if that's where you thought it came from. So it seems a bit random, but there's actually a story behind this. For Sonic 2, Sega requested that Sonic's sidekick be a flying character. So Yasushi Yakamuchi, the creator of Tails, originally designed him to be a Tanuki. This design was rejected as Sega believed the character was too close to Tanuki Mario, so the design instead was changed to a Kitsune with a pair of propeller tails. Kitsunes and Tanukis are common rivals, so it makes sense why they went with this. So Sonic is the rival to regular Mario, Tails is the rival to Tanuki Mario, that makes Knuckles the rival to... Knock Knock is Knuckles! Knuckles is a bizarre case. His red color doesn't match his animal of inspiration, but we can give that a pass since he's meant to represent the third primary color when you consider Sonic and Tails. Speaking of which, the short-beaked echidna. What is this animal? Most likely the oddest set of mammals within the animal kingdom, the monotreme genus. To put into perspective how utterly strange echidnas are, one, they're not related to hedgehogs in any way, despite almost looking identical, and two, their closest living relative is the platypus. I guess you can kinda see some resemblance, but really, what? To add to the absolute absurdity, echidnas have no teeth, and they lay eggs. Like what are these things? And that's only the PG facts. The echidna mating train is a breeding ritual the animals do, where about 10 males will form a conga line behind a female, and then partake in what can only be described as the animal kingdom equivalent of a Mr. Beast challenge. The group will continuously walk until only one male remains, and the prize is exactly what you'd expect. As for the guy's special parts, I don't know how to say this. Let's just say he has four instead of one. Th that's it? That's all I'm gonna say? Jordo, please save me from this abomination. Hey, thanks. I'm Jordo. So, just like any hyper successful media franchise, Sega created an evil, edgy version of Sonic known as Metal Sonic. But nobody talks about him anymore. So, they did it again. Shadow the Hedgehog is a recurring anti-hero within the Sonic-verse. Sometimes he has a similar backstory to Mewtwo, sometimes he's starring in a crappy Pakistani McDonald's commercial. But no matter the circumstance, you can be sure Sonic will also be shoehorned in. Well, yes, Modern Shadow is nearly identical to Sonic and is classified in-game as a hedgehog. This wasn't always the case. 
Shadow was originally going to be named Terios, according to early game files of Sonic Adventure 2. The common urban legend states this name is a Japanese translation of Reflection of, though this is not true. All Japanese words end in a vowel or an N, so that automatically knocks the language out as a source of origin. The name does have Grecian roots, but it means making dreams come true in this language. I know Shadow made my dreams come true, but that's probably not what the creators are going for. So, this piece of trivia is likely... No matter why they chose the name of Terios, he wasn't always intended to be a hedgehog. As we discussed, echidnas and hedgehogs are sort of like long-lost brothers. But there is another. Wait! Who was that? King Boomer, you and Brady are not twins. You are triplets! <laughs> the Tenrex are a group of 29 species that exclusively inhabit Madagascar. They're more closely related to golden moles and shrews than they are to hedgehog. But appearance-wise, nobody would blame me for thinking differently. Which makes it the perfect fit for a hedgehog clone. Some species are even named after hedgehogs. The species that likely inspired Shadow is the Lowland Streaked Tenrec. Sure, it doesn't have red in its color scheme, but it is primarily black, and the yellow closely resembles the pattern in his red streaks. Since Shadow's introduction, a few Tenrecs have appeared in the Sonic comic series, from Gold to Surge. And they look pretty much the same as the hedgehogs, just with a, you know, different little hairstyle. Surge was introduced in the IDW comics in November 2021, so she's pretty new to this fake hedgehog thing. Lore-wise, Surge was created by an Eggman wannabe to prove his own evil Sonic was better than Dr. Eggman's own Metal Sonic. And she certainly looks the part. Her quills spike upward as opposed to Sonic's downward quills. Her main elemental gimmick is electricity, opposed to Sonic's wind, and sports a darker green and black color scheme, opposed to Sonic's brighter blue and red. Speaking of her color scheme, Surge was designed after infamous glitch palette swaps for characters in the Sega Genesis era. We have our aforementioned Eggman wannabe, Dr. Starline, a platypus based on the flying white echidna glitch character from Knuckles Chaotix. We also have Kit, a fennec based on a lesser known blue tails glitch from Sonic 3 and Knuckles. And of course, Surge, who was based on the green Sonic glitch from Sonic 2, which was also nicknamed Ashura because, of course, the Sonic fanbase had to give a palette swap Sonic its own name. Tenrex have been on the back burner of the Sonic franchise for well over 20 years now. Surge is the first one to finally break the mold of obscurity and end into the canon proper. At least a canon that's somewhat in line with the games anyway. And I am absolutely here for it. So at the end of the day, Shadow may be a Rorschach test of a character, but at least he'll always be better looking than this guy. Hey y'all, Jordo here, again. I just wanted to say, I, you know, also have to make some of the artwork featured in this episode, so, uh, you know, just saying, uh, if you want to see more of my work, you can find me on all major platforms under that Jordo. Uh, anyway, yeah, this was such a blast to help put together, and uh, I'm really excited for the Sonic 2 movie coming out soon, and God, I hope it's good. Now, for everyone's favorite character, <laughs> starring in iconic roles such as Big's Big Fishing Adventure, just like his name would imply, Big is based on the largest breed of house cat, the Maine Coon. This breed grows to an average of 40 inches long and weighs up to 18 pounds. That's a big kitty. Maine Coons have Big's massive pointed ears, and they come in blue and striped morphs to explain the coloring. These animals also love water and have excellent hunting skills, which explains why he's always carrying this fishing pole. Another fact is that Big may be partially based on a cryptid. The Maltese Tiger is a rumored subspecies of the South China Tiger that is said to be gray or blue in appearance. Though these rumors are most likely fake, it is worth noting that a blue tiger was actually documented to be born in an Oklahoma zoo in the 1960s. So even though there are no confirmed sightings today, perhaps the blue tiger's existence isn't a myth. Hey, just like it's not a myth that you're gonna like and subscribe this video. Thanks for watching.